All right, guys, are we good? Um, tonight, I am going to be talking about my story, okay? And my name's Anthony Saltarelli, and I'm coming to you live from Linden, Washington. And I'm going to be telling you about, you know, my story, my why, and how it has changed my life, okay? And everybody's story is their most powerful asset, okay? So you're going to be seeing me share my story uh, intermittently, you know. This probably won't be the first time that you'll see me share it, but... Um, you know, just realize that everybody's story is their most important asset. Okay. So, uh, if you have, if we haven't met before, um, you know, over the course of this live, uh, we'll definitely, uh, you know, meet and hopefully be able to connect, um, because I'm going to be telling you about myself, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, make sure that I'm good to go. Uh, that this live is getting through and I'm going to share it and we'll go ahead and get started. So I apologize for the late start tonight. Um, you know, I said I was going to start at a specific time and I started quite a bit later and that is because of some internet connection issues that I've been having. So I apologize with for that. Um, but back to what I was saying. Um, about my story, you know, uh, like I was saying, it is your most powerful asset, right? And, you know, I actually took a, a course, uh, a, a class on, on uh, storytelling, right? And how your story really conveys, um, you know, who you are to somebody else, right? And, you know, it's a very underutilized skill, that people have is storytelling, right? And it's something that, you know, you don't necessarily get overnight, right? It's not something that that happens overnight as far as, you know, your ability to be able to tell a effective story, but it's something that you can start practicing with, right? You can start building on. So, you know, every time you tell your story, it gets, you know, more it gets better and better and better, right? You start to, you know, work out those those little details and you start to connect uh, better with your audience. So if you're not currently sharing your story with people, um, you know, I'd suggest that you start doing that. And I think that you'll understand a little bit more why after I share with you uh, my story on tonight's live. So I hope that you'll stick around and, you know, listen to what I got to say um, uh, because, uh, you know, I want to make that, that personal connection with people. I want people to, to feel like they know who I am, right? So I'll go ahead and uh, get started right now, okay? So, you know, if we haven't met before, my name is Anthony Saltarelli. Um, I've been... Uh, looking to, you know, I've, I've started looking into how to make money online close to a year ago, okay? And it took quite a while to get to the point where I'm at right now, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually rewind and go back a few years and share with you, uh, you know, why I got to the point of wanting to make money online. Because quite honestly, until about you know, a little over a year ago, I hadn't even really thought about making money online. You know, it hadn't even entered my mind. So I'm going to be, you know, sharing some details about, you know, what got me thinking about, you know, different ways to make money, right? Why did I want to, you know, develop a different skill set than I originally went to college for, okay? So I went to college to be an electrician, right? And, you know, I got great grades, got almost a 4.0 GPA, um, and graduated with honors. I uh, went out to, you know, work at a number of different electrician jobs, um, different aspects of the trade, you know, commercial, uh, residential, industrial. And, um, 
the common theme that I was seeing with all of the jobs that I had was except for, you know, there was a few exceptions, but the people that I was working with, um, you know, they didn't have my best interest in mind. They weren't, you know, amicable people to work with. And by amicable, I mean, you know, they, they didn't have, you know, my best interest in mind. They weren't pleasant to work with. Right. Um, and you know, even, at the first job I had, which was a factory job, um, you know, I, I was working 12 hour days, 12 hour shifts, right? And I had an hour drive on either side of that. So 14 hour days, right? And the people that I was working with, you know, they were, they were older gentlemen and they, you know, I got along with some of them. Okay. Some of them, they would tell me to go do something and then I would go do it. And instead of coming to me and telling me, Hey, you know, uh, you didn't do so and so, you know, exactly like I wanted you to, or, you know, could you do this? They would go to my boss and say, you know, Hey, uh, this guy's not, fo not doing what we are telling him to do. And, uh, you know, we've got some major issues here. So then, you know, they'd have a, a employee um, review, you know, every year and I'd get called into my boss's office and, you know, they would uh, tell me, you know, they'd have this list of stuff. They'd be like, hey, you didn't do so and so, you know, so and so complained. I'd be like, well, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. So but anyway, that was the kind of environment that I worked in at my first job, right, right out of college. And at one point I even had my boss's boss call me into his office. He's like, Hey, come here, son. Um, I need to talk to you. I'm like, okay. So he said, Hey, sit down in that chair over there. And, um, we need to have a, a little chat here. So I'm like, I'm thinking, man, this doesn't sound too good, but you know, I sat down in the chair and he's like, yeah. Um, you know, I understand that you're having some, you know, issues connecting with people here and, you know, just being part of the team. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm trying my best to, to do, you know, what, what they're asking me to do and, you know, do the job to the best of my ability. He's like, yeah, well, you need to understand that when you first come into a job, um, you know, he said, you know, when I first started out, you know, so a very wise man told me that I was lower than whale shit. Um, <laughs> at this point, I'm like, what? <laughs> right? And he's like, yeah, you need to understand that at this point, son, you are lower than whale shit. And I'm like, man, I, I didn't know what to say, right? <laughs> I mean, I should have at that point been like, you know what? Um, I'm walking out, right? But, you know, so that's what, that's what my boss's boss was telling me in this job. Well, needless to say, um, I didn't stay at that job too much longer, but, you know, then I went through some couple other jobs. I was doing residential commercial, um, work, you know, getting some different varied experience and keep in mind that in order to get a electrical license, uh, in the state of Washington, you have to go through 8,000 hours in order to get that, right? And until then, you're just basically somebody else's bitch, right, that whole time. So um, with that in mind, you know, the last job that I had, I was actually working at a, a residential electrical company, and these guys uh, came and, you know, hit me up. They were like, hey, man, you know, we've seen the work that you do. Um, we think really highly of you. We want to talk to you, uh, come down to the office and, you know, maybe we can talk about, you know, we've got a position for you. So, you know, I was working for another company. I, I said, sure. You know, so I went down and met, met with them and seemed pretty impressed, you know, with what they were saying. Uh, it was, you know, work that I didn't have a whole lot of experience in. I wanted to kind of get more experience in that field, right? So I was like, sure. And, you know, I put in my two weeks at, at the other company and I went over and started working, you know, for um, this new company. Well, 
the guy that I was working with, when I first started, he was, you know, the nicest person you would ever meet, right? I was like, man, I love this guy. I love this guy. You know, it's just like, you know, working with, uh, you know, your best friend. And, you know, about three to four weeks in, it was like a switch just, you know, changed. It was like, man, is this the same guy? And <laughs> he started, he started, uh, you know, yelling at me and, um, I'd come into work in the morning and, you know, you could get the nice version or you could get the, the nasty version. Right. And, uh, you just didn't know. I mean, it could be the nice version for two weeks and then the next week, you know, all of a sudden, Hey, you know, here's the nasty guy again. And he would be, you know, criticizing my work. Um, and I did pretty damn good work. Um, you know, when I was working there, I didn't do crappy work. Um, and he would come and get into one of his stupid moods and he would tear apart everything that I just did, right? I had one instance, so I was wiring a barn, had over 500 feet of freaking wire in, and he came in, got into one of his stupid moods, he gets up there, he starts yanking it all down, and he's like, you got up there and you replace all that wiring right now. You didn't do it like I told you to. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, except when he started pulling it out, you know, he was destroying the wiring. And I'm like, man, you're destroying the wiring I just put up. He's like, I don't care, get up there. So that's what I was dealing with there, right? And, you know, I stayed there way too long. I stayed there a little over a year. And, you know, I kept telling myself, you know, this is really good money that I'm making, which it, it was, it was pretty good money. And at the end of that year, um, you know, I had lost so much self-confidence in myself you know, I, I I knew I could do stuff, right? But being, you know, emotionally abused like that so often really drains you, right? You, you come out of a situation like that thinking that, you know, I, you can't you can't function, right? And it was, you know, it took me quite a while to recover from that. And looking back, you know, obviously I should not have stayed in that situation for nearly as long as I did, right? Um, you know, the first time the guy blew up at me, I should have been like, you know, this is enough. I'm out of here. And, you know, if I was ever in a situation like that again, that's exactly what I would do because, you know, life's too short to deal with that kind of stuff. Right. So, but, you know, towards the end, um, you know, I just got, I, w I was like, you know, I was always angry. Right. I mean, I was, a, I was an angry person towards the end of that. Right. And, um, it, it got to the point where I was like, you know what? This is enough of this crap. Um, and, you know, the last day that I was on the job, uh, we were working on this one project and, you know, I was installing this wiring in this, you're supposed to put these little, these little bushings in this wire, right? To keep it from shorting out. So I'm putting these bushings in and, you know, Drew, the guy that I was working with, he, he hands me these bushings. I'm like, and these are the wrong ones. He's like, use them. Well, I seen the right ones laying over here, right? So I pick him up, I put him in, and he walks by, he's like, utters a bunch of expletives. He's like, what are you doing? I told you to use those. And I'm like, no, man, um, if I'm installing this stuff, I'm gonna use the right stuff and make sure that I don't have problems with my work down the road, right? <laughs> because, you know, I, I like to do good work, right? And uh, he, you know, at that point, basically, um, you know, blew up at me and I was like, you know what? I quit. I'm out of here. You know, I said that right then. And I was like, when I said it, I was like kind of, you know, surprised. I, it was like kind of a fog, right? I, I heard myself saying it, but it was kind of a weird situation, right? But I'm, I'm really glad that I got out of that whole, that whole situation because, you know, abusers, uh, make you think that you, you can't live without them, right? You need them to survive. And, you know, I'm kind of grateful that I went through that whole situation because now I know more about the way an abuser operates. And, you know, throughout life, um, you know, I see a lot of similarities with, you know, other people. Um, and it's just easier to spot individuals like that, right? So, but really that whole situation made me, um, you know, 
look for a better way to make money, right? Because up until that point, you know, I had been slaving away, you know, working long hours. You know, I was making pretty decent money, but looking ahead um, for the next, you know, 30, 40 years, I was like, man, is this all there is to life, right? Because you're working, you're working for the man nine to five, and it's like, um, you know, there's, it's not fulfilling, right? And you're not, you're not really helping anybody, right? And that's, that's what I want to do with my life is get out there and, you know, make an impact, make an impact in the world, right? And you can't do that uh, necessarily when you're making, you know, when you're at that nine to five. It, so, you know, I'm really, really grateful actually that I had that job because that, you know, forced me to start looking for another way to, you know, generate some income. And then I started, you know, going through the process of, of learning how to, you know, make money online. You know, I went through a couple of, of scams along the way, right? I, I signed up for some stupid uh, cash, uh, cash sites or something like that. And, uh, you know, put in some money and obviously they, they, they stole it, uh, never saw it again. So I learned along the way, but, you know, it really, really made me think about, you know, life and the direction that I wanted to go, that last job that I was telling you about. Um, and, you know, I went through some major periods of depression while I was there, um, some, some really, really dark times. I mean, if I had not gotten out of that situation um, when I did, I'd, you know, hate to think where I'd be today. So just really grateful that I got out of there and, you know, started making some, you know, good choices and uh, learning to, you know, figure out how to make some money online because that's where it's at. Um, after, you know, a year of, of studying and, you know, trial and error and learning, um, you know, I can honestly say that the future um, at least for me and, you know, a lot of other people out there is online. The opportunities are endless. Um, the, you know, income potential is endless as well. I mean, it really depends on how much um, effort an individual puts into it, right? If you take, if you, if you put the effort into it, um, you know, you can go you can go to the moon with this, right? You can go to Mars. I mean, <laughs> you can you can really travel, right? So, um, it's you know my journey in internet marketing. I'll just kind of summarize it this way. Um, you know, I spoke briefly about it at the beginning, but I started you know searching. Literally, the first thing that I did was I went to you know, the all-knowing Google and typed in, you know, how to make money online, right? Um, that's what a lot of people do, right? And, you know, these, these YouTube videos popped up. So I go to YouTube, I'm like, oh man, check this out. Uh, this guy's making over $100,000 a month uh, writing blog posts. I'm like, cool. Wow, this is awesome. So, you know, I actually signed up uh, my first program that I signed up in was Wealthy Affiliate. Uh, some of you may have heard of it. And, you know, I, I learned the blogging platform there. You know, I learned WordPress, um, how to put together a blog, uh, how to, you know, start getting some engagement on that blog. And it was actually pretty cool because their whole site, you know, they, they had reciprocation where you could, you know, go leave a comment on somebody else's blog, they come and leave it on yours and you'd start, you know, building some momentum that way. But anyway, this isn't about that. Um, and then after that, you know, I started uh, looking, you know, while I was, while I was involved with, you know, blogging, I started looking at some other options and, you know, that's where I ran into the, you know, the uh, cash, cash, sites, you know, and, you know, pay $25 uh, a month and, you know, this guy will pay you 25 and, you know, if you get that guy in here, he'll pay you 25 and I looked at the back office, I'm like, what are we paying for, right? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things like that out there, guys, right? You look at it and you're like, what what kind of value is this? I mean, what are you, what are you actually paying for, right? 
So, um, you know, I went through that and then I found this dude on YouTube. He's like, Hey, you know, check this out. Um, you know, in his first video, he's like, check this out. I can help you make money online. You know, I'm a six figure earner and you know, I, I love helping people. So I'm like, cool. This is the guy that is going to help me. Right. So I, it was like a, you know, that was just an intro video. I signed up on his list. I started getting these emails every day, new videos. I'm like, cool. I'm learning how to do, you know, ClickBank. This is awesome. And, you know, I got to about the eighth or ninth video and all of a sudden, boom, there it was. Guys, you know, if uh, you want to continue working with me, uh, I've got this awesome program that I'm affiliated with. Uh, you guys need to go sign up. And, you know, it only costs 30 bucks a month to get in. And then the next tier is, you know, 5,000 bucks. And the next tier is 10,000 bucks. And I'm like, I was like, what happened to this dude? I mean, he was really helping me. And now it's like, I want you to come join my program and, you know, pay 10,000 bucks. And then I'll keep helping you. <laughs> right? So... Uh, at that point, you know, I started getting pretty depressed. I'm like, you know, maybe this, maybe this isn't what it, what I thought it was. Right. And, you know, at that point I didn't really have my vision, uh, my why. And so, you know, little things like that really set me back. Right. Cause I didn't see, you know, the big picture where I was going with this. Um, but anyway, um, you know, after that, I, I went back to YouTube, right? Started looking up more videos and I ran across this guy from the UK and you know, we, I really connected with his video. I'm like, this dude is legit. I mean, he wants to help me, right? So I checked out the link below his YouTube video and I went to his site and it was, you know, coaching, a, a coaching offer. And, you know, I filled out the application, I'm like, Man, I, I don't think he's, you know, he might not respond to me. I mean, it looks like he's a seven figure earner and I don't know if, you know, he's actually gonna, you know, accept my application, but I filled it out anyway. Well, three days later, you know, the guy gets in contact with me. He's like, hey, you wanna jump on a on a half hour Skype call with me? Um, you know, we can just chat and get to know you a little bit. I'm like, man, that would be awesome. You know, this was the first guy I connected with that was like, you know, responding to me and wanting to help me. So I was pumped up. So, you know, he lived over in the UK. I live here in the States and it was a little bit, you know, of a timing uh, problem to get on the live or on, on Skype with him, right? Because over there it would be, you know, 11 o'clock at night and here it would be, uh, you know, eight in the morning or whatever. So. But anyway, I got on the Skype with him. You know, we really connected. Uh, he was, you know, said he could really help me. And I got in his coaching program. And, you know, I learned quite a lot over that course of that program. So uh, that was, you know, a milestone for me. Um, and I was pretty, you know, happy to have met him. You know, we've, we've kept up, you know, communication ever since then. And, you know, I'm proud to call him one of my close friends now, but, uh, you know, he invited me to, he actually had, what happened after that, guys, you got to hear this, right? So I went through his program, you know, and he had this deal on Facebook that he was doing, and I seen his post, I'm like, what is this all about? It was some drawing that he was doing, so I'm like, man, I'm going to enter this drawing. So, you know, I entered, and it was for a um, ticket to a uh you know, event down in Florida, right? And these tickets were not cheap, right? They were uh, 3,500 bucks a piece. So I was like, man, if I could get that, that would be awesome, right? So I entered and, you know, lo and behold, I won the ticket. I was like, man, is this my lucky year or what, right? And so I won the ticket. Um, long story short, I ended up going to Florida to that event and you know connected with a bunch of awesome people down there uh, if you've never been to a live event uh, you gotta go right you gotta go guys i mean it it is it is powerful stuff i mean just being around people who 
have the same mindset as you do and you know that same uh, thirst for success is powerful stuff right and the connections that you can make while you're in at, at an event like that um, are connections that you know can last a lifetime I mean I connected you know obviously a little bit deeper with uh, with the guy from the UK um, I connected with you know people from that came in flew in from Spain um, connected with a person from Australia uh, it, it was you know it was it was good stuff right really enjoyed uh, going to that event and you know I'm definitely gonna be going to more live events in the future in fact there's one coming up um, August of next year uh, the end of August in Ottawa Canada and you know I'm that's definitely on my you know I'm definitely going to that one so um, hopefully you know I might get a few in between here and there but anyway the point is live events pretty powerful stuff and you know from there I started you know applying what I was learning and didn't didn't get a whole lot of you know traction um, I was still stumbling kind of stumbling around a little bit right and you know maybe it wasn't because maybe it was just because I wasn't applying it correctly but you know then fast forward to you know January of this year um, one of the friends that I connected with and actually this is pretty cool stuff um, that event that I went to in Florida uh, one of the people you know after the event we connected I connected with a whole bunch of people on Facebook that were involved in that program right one of those people um, is uh, Linda Bamba now you may or may not have heard of her but whatever um, one of her friends uh, was actually um, Nadia Sabrati, right? And Nadia and Sabrati and me kind of, you know, connected. And, you know, I, f I started following her. And, you know, going back, uh, you know, this, this all happened because of that event, right? I connected with somebody that was in that program, right? I connected with, with Nadia Sabrati, who was a mutual friend of hers. And, um, you know, fast forward to January of this year, okay? Nadia reaches out to me. I get this message. She's like, you know, um, I'm doing this this 100 day, or um, I'm doing this fire starter mentorship program with 100 people. Right? There's only going to be 100 people allowed in, and you know we're accepting applications now, or we're going to be accepting applications starting in I think it was five days or something like that. Right? So, you know, I, I looked over the application. Um, I was like, cool, you know, this, this, this sounds pretty interesting, right? I mean, she was doing it with uh, Mark Lalone, who was a, a seven-figure earner, and I'm like, you know, I seen that she was doing it with him, and I'm like, really? Wow. I mean, to think that a seven-figure earner would, you know, take the time out of his day to coach 100 people uh, was, you know, a little bit, uh, amazing to me right um, I hadn't heard of anything like that before so you know I put the application came out and literally within the first 10 minutes of it being released I filled it out and I'm like this is this is gonna be my break I'm, I'm getting this I'm getting this thing in you know I want to be one of those 100 and lo and behold you know I was I was accepted and you know the the fee that they charged was was insignificant i mean it was like it was like pennies right um to get into this program i'm like are you serious that's all it's going to cost is is 17 bucks or whatever it was 37 bucks well, i'm like man so you know long story short i got involved in this fire starter membership program um mark had had daily uh, webinars that he was doing um, with everybody and you know every night six o'clock webinar with Mark it was on my calendar you know I was excited I was on fire I was you know this guy was we were really connecting right I hadn't connected with somebody like this um, in any other program uh, before uh, especially somebody of his caliber so I was excited um, 
Firestarter mentorship program uh, ended. And, you know, at that point, the last webinar he had, he presented an offer to all of us, you know, where we could become basically, um, you know, get involved in branding university. And it was is a new platform that he was starting to teach people, you know, how to brand themselves. I was I was excited, guys. I mean, when I saw that offer, you know, towards the end of the webinar, he was starting to, you know, shout out prices. He was like, you know, I could sell this for thirty nine ninety seven, but you know, I think that you know, I could sell it for twenty nine ninety seven, but you know, I thought about it and I'm like, you know, not many people would jump on board. So then I thought about, you know, nine ninety seven and I'm like, man, I mean seriously, what is this gonna go for? Um it ended up, you know, going for some insignificant amount. It was, you know, a no brainer. I jumped on board and ever since then my business and my life has really changed changed for the better, right? I mean it's been it's been really influential in taking my business and turning it around into something where I can finally see the vision, guys. I can finally see that, you know, where I want to go. You know, I'm excited for the future, right? Before that, I was just, you know, plugging along, trying to get some momentum, you know, not really knowing exactly what I wanted to, you know, how I was going to achieve success. You know, now I am crystal clear on how I'm going to achieve that success. I know exactly where I'm going and I have a plan to get there, right? So, um, you know, Mark has definitely been instrumental in changing my life and my business. And, you know, this isn't a pitch for, you know, Mark, but I'm just letting you know, uh, you know, through telling my story, how this has impacted you know where I'm going so you know I've been you know with Mark now for you know close to three months and uh, you know I'm starting to see some some moves in my business right before that I was pretty much you know flatlining um, but now you know it's starting to starting to go like this right guys and you know give it you know another eight months a year and I'm confident that I'm not going to realize, you know, I'm not going to recognize where I was a year ago, right? So that's how fast things are, you know, starting to happen. And, um, you know, the lead generation methods that I'm learning now are, you know, cutting edge stuff. Um, anywhere else that I had been, you know, the programs I'd been in, um, definitely wasn't learning anything like that in those programs. So I'm pretty excited. Um, you know, it's basically my story. Um, you know, my vision now is to build a million dollar company within two years. Okay. To help over a thousand people achieve financial freedom for themselves and their families. Now that may seem like a extremely you know, out of this world's goal, uh, vision to have, but, you know, entrepreneurs, which, you know, obviously I am one of them, we think big, right? We think, we think outside of the box, right? That's what makes an entrepreneur is somebody who thinks outside of the box is willing to, you know, take massive action and, you know, stay up late at night to make their their dreams their, those visions come true right so that's what that's what i'm that's where i'm going guys and you know you can you can either sit by the side and watch me do it or you can you know join me um your choice i don't really care either way um i'm going to get there regardless of of uh you know whether you sit on the sidelines or you know, decide, hey, maybe I should, uh, you know, check this out a little further. This guy might be onto something, right? So um, as far as my why goes, my why, and, you know, I really came to grips with this um, over the past couple months, right? Before that, my why was, you know, kind of, you know, not very specific. It was, you know, make money, um, you know, 
be able to buy a, a house and property and all that kind of stuff, you know, all that great stuff. But, uh, you know, the books I've been reading, uh, the training I've been taking, that's not a real why, right? So um, over the past couple months, my why has, you know, evolved to be um, a desire to achieve excellence in everything that I do because my worst fear is meeting the man that I could have been, right? And, you know, that, that really, you know, almost makes me tear up thinking about it because um, the man, meeting the man that I could have been is really the definition of hell on earth, right? Getting to the end of, of my life and looking back and thinking about, you know, I had that opportunity to, you know, take life by the horns and, you know, make something of myself. And I just sat back on my ass and watched Netflix all day, right? And, you know, went back to that nine to five grinding for, you know, the next 45 years of my life just so I could, you know, hopefully be able to retire by the time I'm 60, right? So that's something that, you know, drives me to continue working at achieving my goal, you know, up until, you know, three, basically up until I met Mark, um, you know, I went to bed around nine o'clock at night, eight o'clock, eight thirty, right? And um, I didn't stay up late at night grinding towards my goal. Well, now, guys, it's pretty common to see me up until twelve thirty, one o'clock, one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. You know, grinding away at my my dream, right? Making that vision come true. And sometimes that's what it takes to achieve you know, excellence in your life, you know, is taking that massive action. And really, that is what it takes, guys. You can't sit on the sidelines. You can't, you know, do the, the cash app thing or whatever, right? Um, I mean, you can do that, but you're not going to build a sustainable business for the future, right? And that's what I am, you know, that's what I am doing is I'm building a sustainable business for the future. Something that when I get old, I can take and I can hand to my kids and say, you know, kids, here is what I've built. You know, here here's my business. You guys can take it and you can run with it, right? That's some that's the kind of legacy that I want to leave on this earth, right? And you know, I did a post earlier today about um, you know, the time that we have on this earth, right? And this is something that's really been impacting me a lot lately. I've been thinking about it a lot, right? Every time I think about, you know, doing, you know, kind of screwing off and doing things, I think about, you know, how much time do I have left? Is this something that I want to go on my record as having taken an hour out of my life to do this, right? Because, you know, I, I, you know, quickly Googled this morning, you know, the average amount of time that a person has on this earth. And it was something like 29,750 um, hours or something like that, right? And uh, if you think about that, was it hours or was it days? No, it was days. 29,750 days, okay? And, you know, I'm at the point in my life where if, if that's the average amount of time that a person has on this earth, you know, I've got about 18,000 hours, 18,000 days left, right? So time is becoming very precious, right? I mean, it sounds like a lot, but time, life goes by quick, right? Um, we, we, you know, some of us live longer than others, but the point is we need to be taking the action to get to that goal you know, that vision to achieve excellence in everything we do. If everybody, you know, that was listening to the sound of my voice right now decided that starting tomorrow, starting tonight, starting tonight, you were going to take massive action towards excellence in everything you do in your life. You know, if you, if you decide you were going to do that and you start doing that every single day for six months, eight months, a year, you would, 
you know, be very, very, very surprised at where you would end up at the end of that year. You would look back, you know, guys, I mean, you got to start, you know, this is a book that I picked up, great book. Um, I'm reading books every single day. I'm reading every single day, I'm watching stuff to improve myself, expand my knowledge base. And that is key. That is absolutely key to being you know, achieving excellence in everything we do, right? Because, you know, going forward, that is that is the battle cry, achieving excellence, be a success warrior, right? So, you know, that that pretty much sums up my, my story, you know, where I've come from. This is definitely the most in-depth uh, that I have gone uh, as far as my story goes. And, you know, like I said, your story is your most powerful asset, okay? This is something that has been impressed upon me by multiple uh, seven, eight-figure earners, right? They say the same thing. Your story is your most important asset, or your va most valuable asset, okay? So you need to be thinking about that and you know, thinking about ways that you can convey your story to the world. You know, some people um, that I know that have, you know, become eight-figure, seven-figure earners, they took a very crappy situation that they were in. Maybe they had a terrible childhood. Maybe they had a drug addiction problem, uh, alcohol addiction, um, you know, you name it. Maybe they were a, 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 a sex addict, you know, I mean, I've, I've seen people like that, uh, you know, they, they take their story, that, that thing that, you know, they, 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 they take and they hide in the closet, right? They don't want anybody to see, and they take that and they turn it into their most powerful asset. Um, it really connects with people out there because your story, you know, it, it, it may be unique to you, but there's other people out there that have the same sorts of stories and as you tell that story you start to connect with those people right those people start to you know you build rapport with those people they're like hey you know i can i can relate to that guy or i can relate to that woman you know i i was there i had that you know i, I had that experience and you know these are the kinds of of things that you can use to build rapport with your audience and you know generate you know leads for your business and start to build relationships with people you know i've i've met uh quite a few you know fabulous people on social media that i wouldn't have met if i wasn't going out there putting myself out there you know trying to you know find people to communicate with and build rapport with you know build that relationship with so you know, definitely be, you know, doing that, you know, taking your story and, you know, turning it into your most powerful asset. Um, you know, if, if you're having trouble, you know, formulating, you know, figuring out a way to formulate your story, you know, hit me up. Um, I've got some, some training that I could, you know, give you uh, some steps to take to, you know, kind of put that whole story together, you know, package it up and be able to, you know, make an impact, right? Because all some of you, you know, might not want to be telling your story exclusively on Facebook, right? And your story on Facebook uh, may be a different format than you want to tell it on some place like YouTube, right? Or some, you know, equivalent platform or an ad or something like that. So, you know, I can help you get the, the formula, the storytelling formula uh, that will enable you to you know, beautifully craft that story of yours to attract more people to you, right? So that pretty much wraps up this live, guys. Uh, if you found value out of, you know, what you've heard tonight, um, be sure to leave a comment below, you know, reach out to me, send me a message, um, you know, hit the like button, give me some love, uh, you know, send me a friend request and let's connect, uh, let's, 
you know, I'd, I'd love to get to know you better. I'm always looking to meet new people and develop, you know, new relationships with people and really, you know, make, make an impact in this world, right? And then, you know, network marketing, making money online, because there's a lot of people out there that are struggling. Uh, and, you know, I want to help you, you know, be able to take that struggle of yours and turn it into your greatest success, right? So with that said, uh, I hope that you all have an awesome night and I will see you guys on the next live, which will be tomorrow um, at the same time. So I will see you all then. Have a great night and here's to your success.